This episode of the HVAC School Podcast is made possible by our great sponsors, Fieldpiece and Fieldpiece.com, makers of the job link probes, the MR45 recovery machine, and VP85 vacuum pump, all available at TrueTech Tools, truetechtools.com. Also, Refrigeration Technologies, they're going to be at booth B4417 at AHR in Atlanta, and I'm going to be at their booth at 3 p.m. on the 14th, which is Monday. If you want to come by and say hey and see some of the Refrigeration Technologies products, meet John Pastorello, you'll have a good time at their booth. They're really great, great folks. Also, NAVAC and NAVACglobal.com, they make all kinds of great tools. And I've actually been warming up to their little hand swedge tool. It's a very simple, small swedge tool that you can use with one hand. It takes a little bit of technique, so you've got to get used to using it, but it fits nicely in the tool bag, especially if you're a tool bag kind of a guy, maybe a veto guy. You should take a look at their little hand swedge tool. It's a nice thing to have in the bag. And then also, I want to, as always, thank AeroOasis, AeroOasis.com. And uh, you can check out their nano and bipolar products by going to their website, aeroasis.com forward slash go to get more information. And finally, as always, thank you to Carrier for all their support. And now for the guy who sheds a tear and whispers, Freon ain't free. Every time he finds a leaking braze joint on a warranty call, Brian Orr. All right, you found the HVAC School Podcast. This is the podcast that helps you remember some things that you might have forgotten along the way, as well as helps you remember some things you forgot to know in the first place. And this is a broad conversation I'm having with Jim. Jim has had so much stuff going on, and if you don't know who Jim is, I don't know where you've been, but it's Jim Bergman, owner of Measure Quick and Redfish Meters and all sorts of other things that he does for the industry. But he's had a lot going on over the last six months, and we've had him on the podcast a couple times, but... I wanted him to kind of just review everything that's going on with Measure Quick, with Blue Vac, with Supco, with Redfish, with Testo, with Field Peace. Baccarat is also mixed in there somewhere. There's just all kinds of different things going on with Measure Quick. And so we just go soup to nuts what it looks like now with measurement tools, Bluetooth measurement tools, integrating them together and what the future is going to look like with Measure Quick. Nobody better to talk to about this subject than Jim. So here we go. Jim Bergman talking about the future of app connected tools. Thanks for coming back on the podcast with us, Jim. Hey, not too. How you doing, Brian? <laughs> what were you going to say there? Not too shabby? I was going to come up with something smart, but then I just backed it off because it's so early in the podcast. I figured I'd at least wait till we're 30 seconds in. Okay. It seems like maybe with the Christmas break, you've been taking a little bit of a hiatus, a little bit of a nap. Maybe you're off your game a little bit. Is this going to go okay? I think so. I don't think I've really stopped. I let everybody else take a little bit of a break. I gave everybody at the office the time off till the second. And, I, and I've been working on the vision plan for Measure Quick and where it's going to go over the next couple of months. And well, it is nice because I had a little bit of time to clear my own mind to think about things, how I want to do it, where I want to go. So it's got some pretty cool stuff going. I'm just going to ask you all kinds of questions. And then I know you'll just say whatever you want anyway, sort of like a politician. You ask one question, then you get a totally different answer. So let's start here. You actually have three different apps that you've help develop for yourself and then in conjunction with others. Would you mind reviewing what the three apps are? Oh, gosh, it might even be more than three apps, Brian, actually. Is there? Well, there's three that I know about. Yeah. So there's the TechLink app we developed for Subco. The TechLink apps are electrical diagnostic app. And we actually, when we bought Redfish, we really weren't sure how we we're going to go to market with that. And about that time, Subco called us. It actually looked at the Redfish meter before and they were very interested in it. And they were looking for a, they didn't want to get into the app development business. So it was like a win-win. They had a pretty strong distribution presence, one of the stronger ones in the industry. And we're like, oh, this is probably a good fit for us. So we built out the TechLink app and what we're doing different, Subco's really trying to step their game up a little bit when it comes to the electrical side. They had a lot of meters that they weren't the best quality in the world. And they're really trying to get away from some of that and uh, get into some higher end meters that could do some better diagnostics. So we developed out uh, TechLink with them to do not only do electrical diagnostics, but then they'll tie it in with our meters. So it's a pretty slick little app because it really helps people in an area where a lot of guys need help, and that's electrical readings. And it's, it walks you through not only how to test the components, but it also does some things with utilization testing, things like that. We're actually doing a little refresh on that app because we're tying in the Redfish IDVM 550 meter. That's pretty slick. That's a power quality analyzer. And we're really interested in the 550 specifically for the power measurement side because we do a lot in Measure Quick with measuring EER or SEER. And that new 550, it does the voltage, the amperage, and the power factor. And so we can get a true power and it's got a really, really good low end resolution. It goes down to about three watts. 
it's really good for things like the SEER or EER of an air conditioning system, as well as a fan watt draw, which is your CFM per watts of power consumed. So that's pretty slick. And then BlueVac is the other app we built out for AccuTools. And that's tied in now with all three of their vacuum gauges. And that's a really unique app because it does documentation of the evacuation process. So it does a complete pull down from start to finish, showing you not only the where you're at in the vacuum, but also the decay. And then it does a really nice reporting feature. So if you want to document the total evacuation, you can make a report or something, set it aside for documentation for the manufacturer that it was done correctly, or you know, especially like guys doing mini splits and things like that. They should be documenting the evacuation. A really cool product for that. And then the other one is, or big one, is MeasureQuick. And the MeasureQuick application really ties all those tools together. So we'll, we have not tied in the BlueVac app yet, but we are tying in the Redfish meters. BlueVac definitely will tie in elements of that into MeasureQuick, but a lot of those, what we're trying to do too, is keep some of the features separate. So like TechLink is electrical diagnostics, BlueVac is vacuum diagnostics, and then MeasureQuick is more on the air conditioning commissioning side. So those are the three big products. And we've got some other products too for other industries we've built out, but those are the three big ones for the HVAC industry. Wow, that's a lot. Let's ask this question because I think some people wonder this, and I don't know how much of the master plan you're willing to divulge because I think it probably ends with just taking over the world. But what is sort of your end game? What are you wanting to accomplish with all these? I mean, there's a couple different end games in here. A lot of this is, I don't know if you paid a lot of attention to MeasureQuick, but almost everything out there, in fact, everything we put out there so far has been at no charge to anybody out there. And a lot of our end game is educating the industry and helping technicians be better technicians and more productive and tying in their Bluetooth tools. In fact, we have not even charged manufacturers, Testo, Fieldpiece, AccuTools for inclusion in the MeasureQuick application. We do have some monetization plans for MeasureQuick, and those will come in probably in the next three or four months. We will start monetizing a little bit, but our primary monetization plan has been with utility clients that are using it for aggregating the data and then verifying the readings are within an acceptable set of ranges and then transmitting them from MeasureQuick to their server. So a lot of the work that we're doing for the utility space is actually subsidized a lot of things we're giving away in the MeasureQuick application. And eventually what we really want to be is an OS, an operating system for Bluetooth equipped or test tools. The whole big idea behind this is that a lot of the manufacturers are really good at making a measurement, but they just don't have a clue what to do with that measurement or how that measurement is going to be used within the HVAC industry. Well, like case in point, Dennis Cardinelli, who has a genius when it comes to sensor technology and he designed the sensor for the blue vac and the vacuum gauge, he's never evacuated a residential air conditioning system because it's not the type of work he does. Now, he runs on a vacuum pump all the day, he works in a lab all day. Until he started working with us a little bit on MeasureQuick, he really didn't have a deep understanding of how these tools were being applied in the industry and some of the challenges that guys were coming across with them and where they were attaching them to the system and how they were being used. And he just had a certain set of assumptions about this thing. I worked for Testo years ago, and the Germans at Testo had a whole different opinion about how the measurements were used because they thought that like in Germany, you had to be go through an apprenticeship and you had to go through years of schooling before you could even put your hands on a combustion analyzer. And that's the same way it was over here. And they didn't realize that they were putting tools into the market that people really didn't have a firm understanding of how to use. So they built probably one of the world's best combustion analyzer. I mean, they make great products out there, but the challenge was is that they were putting them in a market where people didn't understand how to use them. And so we did the same thing when AccuTools decided they you know, want to get into a combustion analyzer to get some of the law out of their, they were all vacuum tools primarily. So they wanted to do something on the heating side of the market and they found a combustion analyzer. So one of the things we did, we tied it into the MeasureQuick application and built it in as a diagnostic app. So it'll do actually combustion diagnostics in there. And it's just a way for the tool manufacturers to focus on the tools without having to focus on the software side. Because the software side is probably the toughest part of the business. Because everybody and their brother thinks that there's tons of money to be made in software, but it just requires a ton of work and a ton of maintenance and a ton of upkeep that unless you have a very specific game plan on how you're going to do it, that I'm afraid it's just, it's a tough market to get into. And we've seen it over and over again. And what we've seen primarily is a bunch of apps that are pretty lackluster. You can connect to them. You can see your readings on there. But aside from that, they really don't do much. Maybe they calculate a superheat or calculate a subcooling, but they don't take it to that next level and assist with not only what the readings are, but what they should be, and then what combinations of those readings mean in general to help you with a system diagnostic or detailed reporting. So a lot of different things going on there. 
Yeah, one thing you and I have talked about for several years now is just-in-time education, where you're educating and you are providing more in-depth measurements that typically technicians would shy away from, but now you're giving some sense of what those measurements should be and what they actually mean for the system. And in MeasureQuick, the primary app, it has really nice needles that kind of point to the green zone, and then you can drill down and learn more information. If they're outside of that, it gives you faults all of that. And I'll just kind of throw in there that what you've done really well is build fantastic software that does exactly what it's supposed to do. And like most things in the industry, there's a lot of products out there that do one or two things well, but then they kind of drop the ball on in other areas. And MeasureQuick is just really, really does what it's supposed to do across the range of all the measurements that you're integrating with it. And we've talked a lot about how you built it just kind of start with the largest use cases, you know, a minimum viable product, the sort of thing that the industry needed. And now you're starting to add in all these additional features to the software, which is great. Starting off with the non-invasive testing, which was really innovative, first of its kind in the marketplace. But now you've added in the gas side. You started adding in the gas side. So introduce that to us. What are you doing there? That actually is a huge project. I don't think we realized how big of a project it was till we got into it because not only when we think of gas furnaces, you got a 90, you got an 80, you got 70, you got gravity furnaces, you have category one, two, three, and four venting systems, you have natural gas, you have propane, you have electric furnaces, you have all these different things out there that we really had to build out profiles for each one of these appliances and then sort of map out a process. Probably my biggest frustration with our software is that when I see some people using it, they don't use it to its full potential. It's like we built a graphing calculator and all people are using it for sometimes is addition, subtraction, multiplication. But it's like it does all these other really cool things, but because they don't have necessarily a formal education in their industry, they haven't been exposed to these things. So that's where we're trying to really take it to the next level and put all the indicators and things on the gauges so that as they see these things and they see something's out of range, they can tap on it and get that just-in-time education because early on, like with combustion analyzers, one of the things that drove me crazy is I bought my first combustion analyzer and I'm looking at O2 and CO and CO2 and dew point and to stack temperature and gross efficiency and net efficiency. And I'm like, what does all this stuff mean? And I get fixated on maybe like CO air free, which is not a bad thing to be fixated on, but you're missing all the other elements of what the combustion analyzer can do. And we see this consistently across the board as people buy these tools and they're diagnostic tools and they're using them to do a, some kind of a single function. With the AccuTools Blue Flame, it obviously does, it's a combustion analyzer, but it's also got differential temperature on it. It's also got differential pressure on it. So it can be used to not only measure your stack temperature, but your temperature rise across your furnace or your temperature rise across your boiler, or it can be used for CAS testing because it's got a really high resolution manometer on it. It can be used for setting the gas pressure on your furnace. It can be used for checking the inlet pressure, your total external static pressure. It can be used for checking your pressure switches. This tool that does 10,000 different processes, yet people only use it for one thing. And then even that time, a lot of them don't use it correctly. So our goal with MeasureQuick was to really get people to the next level to where when they're buying these high-end tools, we can walk them through a process that helps them fully leverage the tool fully leverage the software, and then teaches them as they go along what to do when things are outside of the desired range. So we're not only looking at safety, but we're also looking at efficiency and we're sometimes looking at comfort. So it's a multifaceted tool because our industry shouldn't be fixated on a single measurement to make every decision on. And that's sadly a lot of times what's done. A lot of guys think a commissioning and air conditioning system is getting the subcooling set right. And that's about where they stop. I will guarantee you 90% of the guys in the industry don't measure airflow and they don't have tools to measure airflow. And if you ask them what the airflow should be, a lot of them can't even tell you. I go out and ask technicians all the time just to tell me what the tonnage of a piece of equipment is looking at the model number and they don't know. So it's like we're trying to come up with tools to help solve these types of problems. And that's a big part of what we're trying to do with the MeasureQuick software. But No, that's exactly it. And that's what I wanted you to hit on is with the furnace side, you're continuing to build on these modules because HVAC and HVACR, if you want to even expand it beyond that, is such a large industry that even building the comprehensive refrigerant readings software isn't enough. And you've shown that now you have the electrical measurements, you have the vacuum measurements, those are in separate apps currently. But once you start to bring all of this together, now you can not only provide 
answers to questions that technicians have, but you're also committed to providing the training and the education, the why behind what it is that they're learning, which is what makes MeasureQuick so unique in my mind, besides the fact that it's just, it's tremendous software, very well-developed software. I've screwed around with software in the past, and I know how hard it is. Those of you who know my story about my little web startup that I've blown in six figures of my own money when I didn't have it to blow, trying to build software, and it's very, very challenging to do. So I know the investment that it's taken. But now recently, something I'm really excited about is the fact that other manufacturers of instruments are starting to get on board and starting to see the vision of the fact that not only can you help the industry, but you can help them by allowing their tools to be integrated into MeasureQuick. So two companies that come to mind recently are both Fieldpiece and then Testo. And so if you wouldn't mind taking a little bit and talking about the evolution of that and now what you're actually able to do with their probe sets. We started off with the uh, Testo app to app, and then we also did some stuff early on to support DI Manifold customers that were using that product. And it's interesting because it seems like nobody's got a 100% complete solution. And in MeasureQuick, we've been able to help tie that together. And a case in point is on the gas heating side we just did. I'll talk about that for just a second. So gas heating is sort of nice because everything's sort of local. You're standing at the furnace. Typically, you've got uh, supply and return air or right there in the duct work. And you're measuring the incoming gas pressure, the manifold pressure, maybe the total external static pressure, the draft pressure, and you're doing a combustion test. And we have all those tools literally within a few feet of each other. But nobody makes all the tools we need to actually do the test. So in Measure Quick, we're able to tie all this stuff together. So when we're doing a combustion test, people don't realize how interdependent everything is. For example, manifold pressure. So you're sitting there, you clock the meter, you find out the thing's a little bit under fired, and you got to adjust your manifold pressure. Well, what happens when you change your manifold pressure? Well, what happens when we adjust the manifold pressure up is obviously we use more gas. We use more gas, our excess air reading goes down, our stack temperature goes up, our dew point temperature changes, our efficiency goes up or down depending on if we're burning more or less efficient. Our draft changes on the appliance, our temperature rise goes up as we have more fuel now and we have more heat in there. We have our manifold pressure changes. Our draft may or may not change. Our combustion air zone may depressurize more or less depending on what happens. We have an increase in the stack temperature in there. So it's like all these things happen at once. And if you're watching a single reading, you're missing the entire story of what's happening. It's like watching a movie versus looking at a picture. If I were to look at a picture of what happened over your holiday break, maybe your son wrapping his veto bag. Versus watching a movie of it, I'd I'd learn a whole bunch more about the story of what's going on in that short amount of time because a video tells us so much more that's happening. And that's sort of what we're doing in the MeasureQuick software is because we're able to tie all these Testo smart probes live, because we're able to tie into the Blue Flame Analyzer live, now we can take all these readings and we can see how everything affects everything. And we can do all the diagnostics in real time. It just opened up a host of new possibilities. The field piece probes are really great for us because field piece had extended range. One of the big frustrations, and this goes back to manufacturers not actually understanding how people wanted to use the tools. Testo, when they designed their smart probes, they assumed that you would only want to make measurements where you're standing, right? Because for years, they've developed probes that were all had displays on them. And if you weren't standing there, you couldn't see the display. So it didn't make sense to measure inside and outside at the same time. But once we got tools that could stream the data, now, it made a whole host of sense to be inside and outside at the same time. Well, Fieldpiece and their job link probes did a tremendous job on giving us wireless range, better than anybody out in the market right now for Bluetooth. And with that came along the ability now to see what was going on inside and outside at the same time. So now if I want to know what my return air wet bulb is and my outdoor air temperature is, and so I can do a calculation target superheat, I can actually do that now with uh, job link probes. But field piece, on the other hand, like right now, they don't have a Bluetooth manometer. So if I want to know what my total external static pressure is, now I need to tie in the Testo probes to that. So what, what's really cool about what we're doing with MeasureQuick is you as a technician, you put the tools you want in your toolbox. So if you want some field piece stuff, you want some Testo stuff, you want some Blue Flame stuff, you want a you know, energy conservatory blower door gauge in there, whatever you might have, your Redfish meter, we can tie all those different tools in and we can start using each of the different brands independently for the measurements that are coming into your testing. So it actually allows us to use field piece, testo, both at the same time. Or energy conservatory, I can use a blue flame. I can use three or four different meters all at the same time and pull them in and look at that data live streaming and actually do a much more effective diagnostic than I ever could making the measurements individually. 
All right, so let's talk specifically about some things that you can specifically now do that you weren't able to do before without having the integration between these components. So let's start with field piece because that was a big eye opener for everyone. I know it was for our tax. We didn't have a lot of techs who had the field piece probes on their trucks, but a couple of them did. And it really changed the game for them with using Measure Quick. I think because we actually use the tools. What's interesting, I guess, if people understood a little bit of our design process is we don't have a bunch of people sit around programming that don't have any idea how the tools are used. I'll sit down with the programming team. We'll go over what kind of an outcome we want to have. And I really don't tell the guys how we need to get there as much as, okay, here's the things we need to measure. Here's what it needs to do. And here's the typical scenario that we're going to have. And then I let the guys sort of do the programming on it and they hand it to me and then I actually test it. And when I test it, I haven't really had a lot of input in how it was programmed at that point. Because what I don't want to do is micromanage the programmers because there might be some really good ways of doing something that I just haven't thought of yet. Because I'm not a programmer, I have a limited knowledge about how things could get done. So I don't want to limit them on how they do them. And so after I get to use it, what's pretty cool is they get to see how I use it. And then they go, oh, wow, if we don't know going to use it that way, I could have done it a little bit differently or a little bit better. And then we'll sit down, we'll redo it. And then we'll get what we call a minimum viable product out. So what you see today in Measure Quick is not what you're going to see six months or a year from now. It's what we call our minimum viable product. It's what we consider enough that you can use it and it does exactly what you want it to do but it's not to its refined version we're going to have it in the future. So when you're talking about things that you could do now that you couldn't do before, obviously one of the big things we talked about was using probes from different manufacturers in the same software. I think that's probably one of the coolest things in Measure Quick is we've been able to get the manufacturers together and allow Field Piece and Testo and Blue Flame and AccuTools and Redfish and Energy Conservatory, RetroTech, CPS, they all work together. We're, we're tying all these different tools and different manufacturers together so they can actually work in the same software, which is nobody's ever even done that type of thing before. The second thing we've done is to, I think, much better manage some of the Bluetooth tool connections than some of the manufacturers do. We've worked really, really hard on making sure that the tools, when you put them in your toolbox, can be mapped to specific functions, that they connect very quickly, that if they disconnect, they reconnect quickly, that we have taken into account like some of the limitations, like the Testo probes, we can capture measurements because we want the ability to capture things because we know we might go outside and we're going to lose them if we don't capture them. So we've just been able to understand the use case a lot better and then make workarounds in the software that the tools are now function in a way that's usable. I think a lot of people early on, they bought Testo smart probes and for what they wanted to do with them, they weren't usable. And I'm not saying that they weren't usable standalone, but if you wanted to measure indoors and outdoors at the same time, you couldn't do that. And you couldn't really store your readings from inside and go outside and make some adjustments, see even what the readings were. So those are things when in Measure Quick, because we understand how technicians want to use the tools that we're actually able to address and use them that way. And even like with a lot of the Bluetooth connections, you'll notice that in Measure Quick, the tools talk faster, they get more data in, they work much more seamlessly, they come in quicker when you first, when you pair them in. We've done a lot on just the hardware management side to actually make it work to work in a way that it's more conducive to the way guys want to use it in the field. Yeah, when you think about just connect and disconnect, I mean, that was one of the first things we were testing the new Testo probes with Measure Quick after that integration happened. And thank God Testo finally did that. I'm very thankful to them for finally making that happen. And then, of course, to you for working it in there. But it's amazing how much nicer it connects and disconnects automatically versus the Smart Probes app that was originally shipped. And it's a good little app, but we always had issues with it. You'd have to restart the app in order to get a new probe to connect and just lots of little issues there. But with Measure Quick, we weren't experiencing any of that. One of our head guys, Bobby, he's really good with managing the Bluetooth connections. And it's interesting when you look at what we're doing, because we're managing not only Testo, but Field Peace and Blue Flame and Redfish all at the same time. So we have a whole heck of a lot more going on there. And Field Peace probes work differently than Testo probes, work differently than the Blue Flame, work differently than the Redfish meter. I mean, all of them, even though they're all Bluetooth low energy, they use different methods of communicating and different methods of pairing into the application. And we all take all that into account and measure quick and just make the tools work a lot better. It's definitely not without its challenges. And people ask sometimes why it takes so long to get some of the software out. Well, it's because we're on uncharted ground. Nobody's ever done this stuff before. It takes a lot of not only work to even start it, but then we use it and we got to refine it and make it work the way that we'd want it to work so that it's not cumbersome or clunky or convoluted because we have enough headaches in our life with technology, let alone bad technology. So 
we want to make sure that things are so intuitive and measure quick that you don't have to ask somebody how to use it. It just works the way you think it would work. That's probably one of the things I think we've done very well is make an application that for the most part doesn't require an extensive owner's manual to even get going in. I want to take a quick second here in the middle of this podcast, interrupt it to talk quickly about refrigeration technologies, refrigetech.com. You can find all their products by going to truetechtools.com. Offer code get schooled still works for their products. They make great stuff. So Big Blue, great product. Nylog, excellent product when you're assembling flares or threaded fittings on HVAC equipment. Some guys like it on their vacuum rigs, vacuum hoses. Some don't. We still use it. You just got to be careful. You don't want to drop it in the dirt because the stuff will all stick. Nylog goes where you put it, and it's a very high viscosity product, so it's very thick, and dirt will stick in it. So you're going to want to keep maybe some mineral spirits or alcohol around to wipe it off if you get it somewhere you don't intend, but it does exactly what it's supposed to do, which helps fill in those imperfections when you're assembling together a flare or a pipe-threaded connection in a refrigeration circuit, specifically designed for refrigeration. You're not going to use it on water or anything else, but for a refrigeration circuit, I've never found anything better than Nylog. And then also all their Viper products, the wet rag product that helps protect components while brazing. You're going to get a chance to check that out when you go to the AHR conference, which I hope you are. That is the AHR Expo, I should say, in Atlanta. And uh, I'm going to be there on Monday at the booth. The booth for Refrigeration Technologies is B4417, which is really close to some other booths I'm going to be at. I'm going to be spending a lot of time at the solder weld booth which is B4579, AccuTools booth, which is BlueVac at B4565. So they're all kind of there in the B3s, 4s, and 5s as the booths I'm going to be at. So just hang out on those aisles, and we'll get a chance to look at some cool stuff and talk some shop, I guess I should say. So uh, get a chance to see John Pastorello from Refrigeration Technologies. You've heard him on the podcast. If you haven't listened to his episode on internal leak sealants, you're going to want to go back and listen to that. He's a really smart guy. He cares about the industry. And I'm very thankful to Refrigeration Technologies for making such great stuff. So come visit us on Monday the 14th at the AHR Expo at their booth, B4417. All right, here we go. Back to Jim. Let's talk a little bit. Sorry, I just lost my train of thought there. I had a note there, and then that's not what I wanted to say. Okay. You lost your short bus of thought? I did. I lost my, (laughs) yes. That's rude. (laughs) I'm going to blame this on the kidney stone. That's what this is. This is a kidney stone in the brain. I think that might be where they come from anyway, which makes a lot of sense. That's just rocks in the brain. So, so far, you've got the basic refrigerant circuit and the measure quick app. You've got the vacuum side. You've got the electrical side. You've got the gas side. So that's four really very different pieces. And yet we still have guys complaining because they want some other things. Can you talk a little bit about what your roadmap looks like? What are some things that you're going to be working on moving forward? Oh, gosh. Our roadmap is ridiculous. It's literally, I think we've got two years of programming ahead of us pretty easily. And part of what drives your roadmap when you're doing software like this is obviously trying to monetize it. Because what people don't realize is that piece of software they're using, they're getting access to, you're talking about a six figure. Well, we're well into the seven figures of investment into the MeasureQuick platform. And we've been doing this for two years now. And if anybody's ever gone out and priced an app, just like a very simple app, like if you wanted to do a superheat calculator app, that might cost you in the neighborhood of fifty to $75,000 just to do, put in all the different refrigerants and you put in a line temperature and it would calculate a superheat, let's say. That type of an application, that's the range you're, you're looking at typically for that. And then you pay a maintenance fee on top of that. And when you look at what we're doing in MeasureQuick, it's not only superheat, subcooling, and performance. We're looking at EER, we're looking at latent capacity, sensible capacity, the diagnostics, all the different tools that tie into the toolbox, the reporting and sending the reporting to somebody's cloud and the educational sections of that. And then the geotagging and the barcode scanning and all the elements in there. I mean, you think about like a barcode scanner might be a single app. A superheat calculator might be a single app. When you look at all these individual tools, you know, there's a Testo Smart Probes app, there's a Field Piece Job Link app, there's the AccuTools BlueVac app. And all those are individual apps, but yet all those components of those applications and all the tool managements are built into the MeasureQuick platform. So we're building this thing out. A lot of what drives the development is how can we monetize this thing? Because we're going to get to the point eventually when we're going to want to capitalize on some of our investment. And one of the things that I want to assure you and everybody else out there that's using MeasureQuick is what you have free today will be free tomorrow. Our game plan is not to get everybody using MeasureQuick and turn around and charge them for using services. You know, I've been a teacher for 12 years, and this is what I consider what MeasureQuick is, is really the fundamentals. This is just like, if you want to connect your tools and calculate your system capacity with MeasureQuick, 
I don't really think you should have to pay for that. Uh, if you want to generate a basic report, hey, go ahead and generate a basic report. Where we're going to offer some services and what's on our development roadmap on the short term is to offer a data storage so that you can store all the information about that system in the cloud. Anybody at your company can pull it down and use it. Not only that, but the benchmark, meaning how that piece of equipment is supposed to run. So if your lead tech goes out there and commissions the system and he gets everything set up the way you want it, it gets the airflows right, the superheat right, the subcooling right, and it's spot on the way you want it, and your youngest tech comes out and he downloads that benchmark from the cloud, he's going to have the exact same set of assumptions about that piece of equipment and how it's supposed to operate as the lead tech does, right? So it's about making that information accessible and then being able to take a measurement in the field and are all the measurements and stream that data to somebody else to support it, like maybe an OEM is going to want to be able to view the data of a system that's actually operating in real time remotely, right? What we call third-party quality control so that it gives everybody the opportunity to share data and help assist with proper commissioning and proper setup and diagnostics and troubleshooting and things like that. It might be so that we can document certain things are done properly. But right now we've got the cooling side, the electrical side, the vacuum side, the gas heating side. We're wrapping up heat pumps in the heating mode. We've got some really cool plans for that to do charging. If everything works right, I'll have a method put in there that you can accurately charge a heat pump in the winter time, which is something that everybody in the industry has wanted to do, but nobody has been able to figure out a good way of doing it. I think between the power quality meter we have and the measure quick app, I think we're going to have all the tools to actually make that something that's doable. And after we get the heat pump and the heating mode thing checked, Probably our next big one's going to be delving into refrigeration. We've had a lot of guys looking at the measure quick and they're going, wow, this is really cool, but it doesn't do what I want to do for refrigeration. And we've been putting an infrastructure in there to manage all that, but I just haven't dove back into that because the bulk of our users are residential like commercial technicians. When you look at like refrigeration, I'd say it's a much smaller swath of our industry than it is residential equipment. Uh, by far no less important. It's just a matter of when we're looking at opportunities, the residential side is really where one of the biggest opportunities lies because the technicians that are not trained as well and can really benefit from software like MeasureQuick. Where a refrigeration guy, it's more about documenting things were done right, documenting the temperatures, the pressures, everything was done right. He's going to use it more as a documentation tool. I think residential technicians use it more as a diagnostic tool. So it just depends. But I think those are some of the things we're doing. Obviously, geothermals on our roadmap. We're building out the electrical section and the tech lake app for SUPCO. Uh, I want to do a lot more in the electrical diagnostic side. And then on the BlueVac app, we're doing multiple gauge support. And then after I went out with Andrew Greaves and we did that large chiller, we really found we needed to make some improvements in the application for commercial industrial guys doing vacuum. So we need to be able to adjust the data log frequency. So because at 24 hours, we're at a bazillion points of data, way more data than we needed. So we need to be able to adjust that for longer data logging times and just make the app work. Uh, multiple gauge supports, another one we want to do so we can be measuring vacuum at the pump and vacuum in the system and just comparing those two, the vacuum at each gauge, comparing them. Because there's some cool stuff there we can do with the rate of pull down and things like that we're going to be looking at. And then there's the whole project management side. What people don't realize when they look at Measure Quick is a lot of times it's how we anticipate they're going to use it. One of the things that we try to do with Measure Quick is everything we do in the HVAC industry should really be either project or process focused. In other words, we're there to do something specific. And what we really designed it to do is to commission equipment. And commissioning means to take a new piece of equipment and getting it operating to some type of a standard. So usually it's a manufacturer's standard of operation, or we're getting it commissioned to the design. If we're doing a heat loss calculation, interlunch latent sensible split right, whatever that is, it's a process that we're going through. And a gas heating is a process. So Let's take gas heating, for example. When you start a project in MeasureQuick, whenever you're using MeasureQuick, you turn it on. Down at the bottom, there's a button called Projects. And when we click on a project, then we need to pick, are we doing a gas furnace test, an air conditioning test, a non-invasive test? What are you going to use the software for? So when you click on that gas furnace, you hit Continue on there, it's going to walk you into a process. So you're going to see notes about the project, job site information, equipment information and system profile, and then measurements. The thing that you got to understand here is why we're doing some of the things that we're doing. So project notes, this is for what we're calling future-proofing our product. So this is so that the dispatcher at the office can put some notes in about the project. So you're going out there, this is a new startup, new installation. They want you to set something up a certain way, or they want to tell you, don't let the cat out of the door, whatever it is. 
That's what that project notes section is about. The job site section is about filling in information about where are you at? Who's the primary contact at that place? What address are you at? Just information about the job site itself. But then we get into equipment information. Here's where the rubber meets the road with Measure Quick because we need to understand in Measure Quick what you're working on so we can help you properly set it up and diagnose it. Because if you're going to work on a 70% efficient furnace on an old standing pile with four cells on it, it's going to be a whole lot different than a 90 plus full modulation furnace. So we need to know, was it single stage? Is it multi-stage? Is it 90 plus? Is it 70 plus? What is it that you're actually working on? What is it uh, propane or is it natural gas? All this information about the equipment. What's the input? How many BTUs of input? What's the rated external static pressure? Because if we don't know what that information is, then we can't tell you if you're in the right ranges or not. So there's this whole profiling section and profiling is just telling me exactly what you're working on. And after you profile it, then we can make measurements. People don't realize how important this is. Sometimes we skip this whole taking a few minutes and looking at the equipment to understand what you have, and they go right to the measurement section in there. And that's really not the way the tool was intended to be used, because if you want to get the most out of the MeasureQuick application, then you got to walk through the process of actually giving us a little bit of information about that system. Then you take your measurements, and then you can start diving into the diagnostics and things like that. So what we're going to be doing here in the near future is information about the job site, about the equipment, about the project, that'll all be stored in the cloud so that once that information's put in once, you never have to input that again. And so that every technician that comes out is using the same set of assumptions about how that piece of equipment should operate and what the target superheat should be, what the target airflow should be, what the target subcooling should be, what type of a system it is so that they can actually start using the measure quick measurements and diagnostics section right away instead of entering details and information about the system. Because what we found out early on was that fat fingering in large amounts of information on a smartphone, like model numbers and serial numbers and customer names and addresses, it's just not a great medium to do that on. So we're building that out in a desktop application so that you can have somebody at the office that actually has a full-size PC and a keyboard that can type it 100 words per minute, put that information in for you so that you're not trying to do it on your smartphone on the job site. And that, when you're looking at what we're building out and how it's going to be used in the near future, those are the big changes you're going to see. But in using the software, realize that this is project or process-based. And you're going to see very shortly, we're going to have a dashboard in there that's going to allow for some processes to be done like Clocking the meter might be a separate process, or we're doing some duct leakage testing. That'll be a separate process. So there'll be some standalone processes in the Measure Quick application. It might even be access to other apps. So you might want to do electrical diagnostics, and you'll be able to access that, open the Subco Tech Link app right through Measure Quick, or open up the BlueVac app right from Measure Quick. Because we do do some app to app communication too in there. But the idea is once you're in Measure Quick, you can do all your testing in Measure Quick. You can pull information from other apps back into MeasureQuick, and then it becomes your measurement operating system where all that data can be managed and used. That's where we're really trying to go with this product, and that's one of the things I don't think everybody understands sometimes when they're using it. Yeah, it's an area that even I am sometimes challenged with because when I first get an app in my hands, I just want to use it real quick. You know, I just want to see how it works and use it. And building it into a business process takes a little bit more time, a little bit more commitment to make that happen. And I think eventually that will happen. I would give a perfect example in the commercial world. And anybody who works in light commercial has heard of Service Channel. And that was a fairly small management product that was out there five years ago. It was one of many. And now they've just taken over because it just become the best option for uh, light commercial customers to manage their sites and for entry of when technicians are on job sites and readings and all that sort of thing. Actually, not really so much on the reading side, but more just on the management side from the expenses and all that. But over time, that just takes over. And I think MeasureQuick's going to build up that steam as businesses start to use it as a core piece of their business, which which I'm sure is a big part of the long-term monetization strategy anyway. Yeah, and it's we're working on integration with service titans on a roadmap is one of the things we want to do. We want to stay in the test and measurement side of the business. We don't want to get into, into the customer CRM side. We don't want to get into the fleet management side. We want to focus on specifically on what we're really good at, which is tying into Bluetooth tools, aggregating the data, validating the measurements, and reporting the results back to the interest of party. I mean, that's really at the core of what MeasureQuick does, and that's what we're really good at, and that's what we want to focus on. So we have noticed, it's like when you look at companies like Service Titan or what they're doing on the service side, 
why would you even want to try and compete with that? Because it's such an immense, powerful program. And once a company commits to a framework like that, you're not going to get them off of it. So you may as well figure out how to integrate these things together. I think that's what we're starting to see a little bit more of is less standalone solutions and more that allow for integration of other products. And that's where we're sort of on the cutting edge on that. Actually, we are seeing it right now. I mean, Subco is not in the app business because they don't want to be in the app business. They want to be in the tool business. So they're focusing on developing more Bluetooth tools. They're actually coming out with a new vacuum gauge. You guys will see it at AHR. We have the new clamp meter. We have the redfish meter. They have other things in their development roadmap their team is working on, but we're doing all the software for that. Same thing with AccuTools. Core Tools didn't want to be involved in app development. They don't want to support apps. They don't even know how to do apps. So Dennis equipping all his tools with uh, Bluetooth radios was a natural fit and allowed him to come into the Bluetooth world without having to focus on application development. And we've seen, on the other hand, companies that do do apps, but they don't do what their customers want them to do. And again, we're able to address that in measure quick because we're a small company. We're able to design what the industry needs. We're able to pivot and decide when we're going to add new features in there. And we don't have to go through a hierarchy of on a chain of command to get stuff done. If we want to do it, we just do it. That's been really cool. So we're seeing more and more of those things happen. I think we're going to continue to see them in the future. I think it's a really, real cool time to be in this industry because I think we're seeing things really for the first time in our lifetime. And I don't know that we're going to see this type of a boon in technology again that we're seeing today. I think it's a really, really cool time to be in the industry because if you think about it, like we went from all analog to to digital and think about it, it took like 20 years. In fact, there's still more analog gauges out in our market than there is digital. But I would say there's, we have people, at least everybody that's looking that the buys a set of gauges today at least looks at the digitals and the digitals are getting to the cost point where it doesn't make much sense to even buy an analog setting. For a few dollars more, you can buy a set of Testos or a field piece smart probes or field piece job link probes, whatever you're going to want to use. We're seeing this time where the electronic options are dropping in cost. They're getting much better. They're allowing us to look at things in a whole new way than we've ever looked at them before. It's allowing us to accelerate the way that we're doing things. It's just a cool time to be in the industry. So I'm really looking forward to what the next couple of years are going to bring, but I just don't see anything but a deeper and deeper integrated solution that really covers more breadth of what the industry needs it to cover. So I got my hands on the new Redfish clamp, which you graciously sent me, and it's a really nice meter for a lot of different reasons. The power quality side is great. The way that the display was laid out and the way that it works with the app is excellent. Just everything was well thought out. When is that meter going to hit the market? So those are being manufactured right now, and they'll hit the market probably towards the beginning of February is what, if I had to guess, when we'll see those actually hit the market. We're, we're wrapping up packaging and stuff like that right now on the meters. And then we have a little bit more integration on the integration side, like we're going to do some like capacitor and our load test. What we found, a lot of clamp meters do not have the accuracy or the resolution you need to actually to do a cap test. So to do it on a live cap test where you're testing it under a load and the Redfish is really, really good for that because it'll read down to one or two milliamps. Obviously the voltage is there. And so we'll be doing some tests like that built in and we're looking at some other things we can do with EER efficiency and SEER and things like that as well on the meter and other features we want to tie in. But we'll see that all hit around February. We're wrapping up the app side now and then we're also going to integrate it in with uh, Measure Quick pretty quickly too, so we can do the pulling those power measurements into the Measure Quick framework. All right, very cool. So I'm going to recommend to all of you, and I've said this before, but I work with companies that are doing good things for the industry, that are good for technicians. Jim is definitely on the top of that list. I've always looked for those types of businesses, and I think supporting Field Peace and Testo for stepping up and integrating with Measure Quick, uh, I think remember them. Remember the fact that AccuTools and BlueVac has worked with Jim. We'll take a look at those products. They're really tremendous. And then when something new comes out into the market, give it a shot. I think you're going to really like the new meter. I think when you have friends or different industry connections that aren't aware about Measure Quick, just let them know about it because I think a lot of technicians are going to benefit from it. A lot of companies are going to benefit. And there's a lot of industry players that still don't know that it exists. And I think that's a shame, but that's going to be changing very quickly. But just be a part of that change by being proactive and supporting 
companies that actually care about the industry. I would also say, you know, John Pastorello is another example of this, another guy, Refrigeration Technologies, who has just shown a commitment to the industry. And you may or may not agree with everything that he says. You may or may not agree with everything that I or Jim say, but you can't dispute the fact that Jim is somebody who supports the industry and cares about making it better, cares about helping technicians. If you've ever called him on his cell phone, you know he answers and is always happy to help. And the message there is everybody call him on his cell phone at all hours. I know you'll appreciate that. Oh, thank you very much, Brian. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to give it out at the end. So anyway, how can people support you? How can guys who don't really know quite yet what they should do in order to help this along? What do you want them to do? By the way, we just did a back rack integration of the air combustion analyzer. So it's doing the QR code scan. We actually do a couple different ways of talking to tools, app to app, QR code as far as the back rack, and then direct connect via Bluetooth. And the big thing for us is we're trying to expand out our tool framework. If you have manufactured the tools that you want to see on the Measure Quick platform, you need to let us know and you need to let them know that they should be talking to us at Measure Quick because I really do think we're going to do a better job than anybody of tying all these measurements together, tying them into the processes that you want to do, and making them work the way that you want to work. So we do have uh, UEI and a radar. We've been talking to them a little bit. I think that's going to happen relatively quickly. Testo just sent me a 320 and a 330, which we're going to be tying in on uh, app-to-app communication. Some tools are extremely, com- like you get combustion analyzers, are extremely complex because of all the different things they do. But the big thing is, is that the industry support we got when the field piece job link probes came out, the number of people that communicated with field piece that they wanted the field piece probes to work with measure quick was tremendous. And that was a big part in them making the decision to do that. And I think at the end of the day, field piece would tell you that it was a huge benefit to them also, because we connected them with customers that wanted the combined solution that wouldn't have bought it had it not worked with a measure quick application. I think those are things that really help us along is to help us build our user base, to join our Facebook pages and help us determine what the next steps are we need to do, what things you guys want, and give us feedback on the application on how we can make it better, how we can make it work for you. And just in general, I mean, that's the way that you can help us. And eventually, when we go to the monetization side, if you can support us along the way, that's great. But again, what you guys have today, you guys will have tomorrow. That's We're looking at other ways of monetizing aside from taking away features and charging for it, because we already know that would be over like a lead balloon. So what you see today is what you're going to continue to get. So don't hesitate to use the application for what it's worth. I mean, there's a lot of different ways we'll be able to monetize in the future, but your support along the way is really, really helpful. Obviously, also buying the Bluetooth tools from the manufacturers. That's big. If you can let the manufacturers know when you're buying the Tesla smart probes or the job link probes or the back rack analyzer or whatever you're buying because it works with Measure Quick, that'd be awesome too. Because I think They need to hear that what we're doing is influencing your decisions. And obviously, we want to know, too, if there's ways we can make the software better or you see problems along the way, please feel free to reach out to us and we'll be glad to make that a better product for you. All right. I think that wraps up our episode for today. Thanks for joining us and take to heart everything that Jim said. We at HVAC School like to support the, I don't want to say the little guy, but the companies that care, the companies that have a soul that aren't just giant corporate monsters that aren't listening to the field. And I think the companies that are working with Jim and obviously, you know, Redfish being Jim's company, Measure Quick also, they're companies that we want to see win in the marketplace because they build great products. So thank you for doing what you're doing, Jim. And we look forward to talking to you again soon. All right. Sounds good, Brian. I'm off to cook dinner now. So All right. it's my other hobby. <laughs> Me too. See you, buddy. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening to the HVAC School Podcast. If you haven't downloaded the Measure Quick app, then I would suggest that you go do that. And as soon as you're done downloading the Measure Quick app, then also download the HVAC School app. That's an easy place for you to listen to the podcast, read the tech tips, and also use some of our specialty calculators that we have there. We've got all a whole roadmap of things we're going to build out on our app as well. So new things are going to be coming. And keep an eye on everything Jim's doing. Thank you for continuing to listen. Thank you for the support that you give to our sponsors. It means a lot, especially when you tell them that you heard about a particular product on HVAC School. And again, those sponsors, Carrier Field Piece, Refrigeration Technologies, NAVAC, and then also Solder Weld and AccuTools, which is BlueVac. We do some work with those guys as well. And whenever you give those companies some love and let them know that you've heard about them on HVAC School, that's very, very helpful, and we appreciate it. Now, one thing that you may not know is that converting pounds to kilograms, it can really cause mass confusion. (laughs) 
I, I, I should have said that differently. I should have said it like, I'm going to give it to you a different way. So that, that way, if you tell one of your friends. Did you hear about the change from pounds to kilograms? Yeah, it caused mass confusion. All right, all right, I'm done. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time on the HVAC School Podcast. Thanks for listening to the HVAC School Podcast. You can find more great HVACR education material and subscribe to our short daily tech tips by going to HVACRschool.com. If you enjoy the podcast, would you mind hopping on iTunes or the podcast app and leave us a review? We would really appreciate it. See you next week on the HVAC School Podcast.